This video is to show how to find the T critical value from the T distribution using a TI Inspire and your statistical tables. So to start off, I want to find the T critical value for a confidence level of 95% when the sample size is 30. Now if I'm going to use my TI Inspire, the first thing I need to do is calculate the degrees of freedom. So for a one sample T test for means, we're talking about N minus 1 degrees of freedom, which is going to be 30 minus 1 or 29 degrees of freedom. Also, in order to figure out this number in the TI Inspire, you've got to determine the area to the left um, of that particular t-score. So since we want 95% in the middle of the distribution, that leaves us with 2.5% to the left. Now remember, this is going to give us a negative number in our calculator, but we want the positive number that's reflected on the other side when we write it down, because it's the same number, which is plus or minus. So to do this, I'm going to take my TI Inspire, I'm going to go to a scratch pad, I'm going to press Menu, Statistics, and Distributions. And if you look, number 6 says Inverse T. When I click this, it's going to ask me for the area. Remember that the area is always the area to the left. So I'm going to type in 0.025, and I'm going to type in 29 degrees of freedom. That's going to give me negative 2.045. Now remember, that is this one over here to the left that I've got in red. Um, the other number over here to the right would be positive 2.045. Four, five. And it doesn't really matter um, which one you use because when you put it in the confidence interval, you stick a plus or minus in front of it anyway. So the T with 29 degrees of freedom from the TI Inspire is 2.045. If we were going to do the same thing from the T distribution table, what we would do is take the table itself and we would locate the correct confidence level at the bottom. So on ours, that was 95%. Here is that confidence level. The next thing that I would do is I would locate the appropriate degrees of freedom. So here is the 95% confidence level. Degrees of freedom was 29, right? So I look and that does correspond at 2.045. All right, let's do the next one. We have a 99% confidence interval with 23 degrees of freedom. Now, while I've got the table up, let's go ahead and find that number in the table. Let me switch my highlighter color here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for 99 degrees of freedom, uh, sorry, 99 degrees of confidence, and then I need to look at the row that has the appropriate degrees of freedom. So since we're doing a one sample, we're talking about n minus 1 degrees of freedom, that would give us 22 degrees of freedom. So I look across and those cross at 2.819. 2.819. So with 22 degrees of freedom from my T distribution table, I get 2.819. From my T, I inspire. Again, to do an inverse T, I'm going to go menu, statistics, distributions, and number six, inverse T. The area to the left in a 99 degree confidence interval, or 99% confidence interval here, would be 0 0.005, because I've got 1% left over, that's half a percent on either side. So I'm going to type in 0 0.005 to the left, that is the area to the left of the score that I want, and then I want 22 degrees of freedom, okay? And there is the negative 2.819, remember this is the one that I have highlighted here to the left, um, and the one that matches it would be over on the right side. So from the TI Inspire, we get the same value, 2.819. All right, now let's do one more, and this one's going to be just a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the TI Inspire. I want a 90% confidence interval where the sample size was 65. Okay, so I know with a one sample test, this means the degrees of freedom is N minus 1, 65 minus 1. We're talking about 64 degrees of freedom. So with a 90% confidence interval, I would have 5% to the left of the score that I'm looking for. I'm going to go Menu, Statistics, Distributions, and Inverse T. The area to the left is 5%, 0 0.05. The degrees of freedom is 64. Enter. All right. This gives me a inverse T of negative point. 1.669. Okay, so remember the one on the right would be the positive version of that. So in my TI Inspire, okay, I get 1.669. Now, when I go to look on the table, the statistical table for this, 
Okay, um, I have a little bit of an issue, and the main issue is that when I look on that left side for the degrees of freedom, there is no 64. I've only got 60 and I've got 80. So one's a, too big and one is too small. And my number is somewhere in between. So what you want to do is if you're using the statistical table, you are always going to use the degrees of freedom that is less than your degrees of freedom. So we want 64. So we want the number on the table that is the closest without going over. So we're talking price is right rules here. So 64, we're going to look at the line that says 60 degrees of freedom on the table. All right, so there's that line. And then I'm going to go ahead and check my 90% confidence level. Okay, And you can see that those cross at 1.671. So that is going to be the number that I would use in my confidence interval if I'm talking about um, a T distribution uh, with degrees of freedom 60, 1.671. Now on the AP exam, you're going to notice that this would give you a different answer whether or not you used your calculator or whether or not you used the table. So good news is that they will accept both of these values, the value of using technology or the value using the T distribution table. However, if you use the T distribution table, since you aren't using the correct degrees of freedom for the problem, you should make a note. Note, I used degrees of freedom equals 60 on the table to get this value. And as long as you do that, you should get full credit.